Well, so Amber Heard is out there just doubling down on this Johnny hit me. All of my stories I just told on the stand in Virginia are true line that absolutely nobody on the planet believes. And so a lot of people want to know, isn't there anything Johnny can do to just shut her up? So we're going to talk about injunctions. An injunction is a court order that tells somebody you are not allowed to do something. And if you do it, you can be held in contempt. And contempt can be quite serious. It can be penalties. It can be other types of sanctions. But it can also be jail if it's, uh, if it's charged, charged as criminal contempt. So unlike really a judgment that she has the ability to, to basically ignore uh, up until the point that, that Johnny starts emptying her bank accounts. An injunction has some teeth to it that a normal money judgment for damages isn't going to have. So I'm going to talk about an injunction, whether that's feasible in this case. Can, can he do it? What does the law say about that? But then I'm just going to warn you guys. I'm going to be telling you what I think about that and what, from my opinion, Johnny needs to be thinking about at this point in time as he's evaluating what does he want to do in the aftermath of this trial and what's going to help him move, move forward and heal. So really the best example that we have right now of a uh, post-defamation verdict injunction is the one that Cardi B uh, just got in March against a YouTuber named Tasha Kay. And so Tasha Kay was saying all kinds of, you know, really unpleasant things about Cardi B. She had, um, you know, videos that, that she would produce um, where she said a lot of things that were uh, quite, quite defamatory. And Cardi B, of course, sued her and won. Won a unanimous verdict from the jury, won on every statement that uh, she alleged was defamatory. And so Tasha Kay, however, refused to take her videos down. And she had testified at trial, basically, um, you'd have to have a court order to get me to stop, stop calling Cardi B these, these defamatory names that I've been using. So after getting the, getting the judgment, Cardi B went back to court and said, please, please give me an injunction. So it's worth looking at um, because they, they did a really good job uh, in how they voiced their request. Um, I'm gonna, I have the brief that, uh, that basically the motion that Cardi B filed in support of her request for an injunction. Uh, I found it very well done. Uh, and so very, very helpful as, as a resource and kind of a guideline. So she starts off by describing the factual background, the scenario, and I'm not going to really spend um, time on that. We're going to look at the law that, that, she, that she addresses in, in her brief. And so she points out there's traditional factors that courts consider in deciding whether to grant an injunction. An injunction comes from the court's equity power. And what that means, it, it stems from the old days in the courts. Maybe it's, maybe it's still like this in the UK. Um, most courts in the, in the United States do not divide law and equity anymore, but traditionally they were separate functions. And so the law courts were the ones charged with basically carrying out the, the statutes, the enactments of, of parliament or the government. The equity stemmed from the king's power to do justice broadly. And so to be able to grant relief, essentially, if he thought it was going to be fair and just under the circumstances. And so American common law courts often inherited these, these same types of powers. And so an injunction stems from that authority, um, basically a, a power that the court has to look at a situation and craft a remedy to right a wrong. So with an, an injunction, typically what a plaintiff has to show, they have to show they have suffered an irreparable injury. They have to show that the legal remedies available are not adequate. 
They have to show that the hardships that the injunction would impose on the parties favor the plaintiff. And they have to show that granting the injunction would not harm the public interest. Looking at how Cardi B argued this on the first points, um, they make a very strong case that the injury that you suffer through repeated and continuing acts of, of defamation really is irreparable. It's a reputational harm that's going to have an emotional impact. It's going to have effects on your, your livelihood and, and your, your self-regard and, and your well-being that, you know, getting a judgment for money damages really doesn't resolve. Um, our civil legal system is set up so that essentially money is the fix of everything. It's, it's kind of all we have. And so it's, it's what we use. Um, but I don't think it's, it's really that strange to point out that, that some things you just, you can't put a price on what that, what that imposes as a cost. They also point out that for a lot of reasons, these monetary damage awards are not adequate to deal with the harm of a repeated and ongoing defamation. And part of that is because you're just putting the burden back on the victim to have to keep going back to court, incur the expense over and over and over again in order to assert their rights. But they have to do that with no guarantee that they're, they're ultimately going to get their judgment paid. If a, if a plaintiff or a defendant is judgment proof, they can get verdict after verdict after verdict, and it's never going to actually translate into some type of compensation in their pocket for what they have had to endure from that defendant. They point out that the harm to the plaintiff very much outweighs the harm to the defendant because defamatory speech is not protected by the First Amendment. You don't have a right to defame people. So taking that right away from you in, in a written order is really not a harm. It's not something that you suffer from because you never had that right to begin with in the first place. They point out that in the absence of an injunction, there is nothing really preventing the defendant from simply republishing the statements over and over and over again. Uh, they use an example that uh, apparently they sent a cease and desist letter uh, to take a video down, but then it was instantly republished within, within a day. And so expecting the only recourse for the plaintiff to be having to file suit over and over and over is much more of a hardship than it is to simply tell the defendant, you need to shut your mouth. You don't have a right to be saying these things. And so lastly, then, when they talk about the impediment, the impairment of the public interest, uh, what they're really looking at is, is the First Amendment principles here. And so... There is a kind of general rule that courts don't like to prohibit speech before you say it. It's the term of art in the law is a prior restraint. Courts don't like prior restraints. Um, the idea is that they put people in too much fear that they're gonna, gonna run afoul of the restriction. And so it chills them from engaging in speech that is actually permissible. It's, it's not. It's not prohibited by the order, but you're just so scared of running afoul of the order that you're going to self-censor and you're not going to say things that you do, in fact, have a right to say. But this brief points out that that is a different situation than one where speech has already been found to be defamatory and you're simply being prohibited from republishing it. That doesn't create the same kinds of problems, the same kinds of disincentives that you have with a injunction that is unadjudicated uh, that might, you know, might impinge on your, on your lawful speech. So in that situation, courts have recognized and, and allowed the permissibility of, of permanent junctions. It's still certainly not common. Um, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think that um, 
we should overstate how difficult it, it probably is to, to be able to justify and, and request an injunction on these types of grounds for a lot of technical reasons. Um, if we look at what the jury actually ruled on in the verdict forms uh, in, in Johnny Depp's case, it can become a little difficult to translate that into what actually is, what did they actually find was not true that she's not allowed to say. If you want to get technical, what the jury found was defamatory, was saying, I spoke up against sexual violence and faced our culture's wrath. That has to change. Then two years ago, I became a public figure representing domestic abuse and I felt the full force of our culture's wrath for women who speak out. And I had the rare vantage point of seeing in real time how institutions protect men accused of abuse. These statements had a defamatory implication that the jury concluded was, was not protected but they didn't have to actually give a verdict on what that implication was. Was it that Johnny was an abuser? Was it that Johnny uh, did the specific things that she had alleged in the TRO when she went public? Is it that Johnny raped her with a bottle? The verdict isn't specific, and so that can be a little bit of a problem in terms of identifying what exactly is it that the jury said this, this, she is not allowed to say this, that that's a problem. So part of the reason why that's a problem is because an injunction prohibiting speech, it has to be narrowly tailored. It has to target just that speech that is not allowed and not sweep up other speech that is protected, that, that you are entitled to do. And Amber Heard, as, as gross as she is, still has First Amendment rights. She has not forfeited her ability to speak on matters of public significance so long as she is not being defamatory. But let's say, just hypothetically, that we could identify the defamatory implication is that Johnny Depp abused her, plain and simple. Johnny Depp physically abused her. Uh, the jury clearly rejected that, did not buy it, and therefore she should not be allowed to repeat that in public. So could he then seek an injunction to the extent that her comments on these interviews, this interview that she's done with uh, Savannah Guthrie, are essentially doubling down, reiterating these same allegations, these same accusations that Johnny hit me that the jury has, has already rejected. Virginia does have a process to be able to, to request injunctions. And it frankly looks like it's maybe not even that difficult to do. Um, I will definitely defer to Virginia lawyers on their local process. Um, these things can vary a lot by jurisdiction. And just my personal experience trying to sort through how things are done in Virginia courts, it can be a little bit opaque trying to sort out the processes. But they have this very general statute uh, that simply says every circuit court shall have jurisdiction to award injunctions. Whether the judgment or proceeding enjoined be in or out of the circuit or the party against whose proceedings the injunction be asked resides in or out of the circuit. So this is a pretty broad grant of authority to the Virginia court to award injunctions when it's appropriate. And there doesn't appear to be a whole lot required to do that other than notice to the party so that they have an, an opportunity to, to respond. Um, so based on that, theoretically, if my reading of that is correct, Johnny would just need to file a motion in Judge Azkarati's court, make his case for why he needs the injunction and why the injunction is appropriate, and uh, based on that, Judge Azkarati would have the power to issue it if she so chose. I'm also going to point out uh, real quickly an article that I found that was written by uh, Professor Eugene Volokh. He's a law professor at UCLA, one of the nation's top constitutional scholars, um, very, very renowned um, guy. I really enjoy his work myself. 
And so he wrote a 2019 article uh, called Anti-Libel Injunctions, and it basically is a massive <laughs> study, review of both the, the legal issues that are implicated by it and then the practices in all of the jurisdictions in the United States. So you can find this on Google if you're, if you're interested. Um, the whole PDF is, is available. But the reason why uh, I wanted to point it out is because uh, in this article, Professor Volokh does indicate that there is some precedent uh, in the Virginia Circuit Courts for issuing anti-libel injunctions under, under some circumstances. So he, he cited a couple of um, Circuit Court decisions. Fortunately, I wasn't able to find those online myself, so I'm gonna have to trust Professor Volokh that um, that's accurate and that um, they aren't like particularly unique circumstances. But certainly, even though those aren't going to be binding as a matter of like the Fairfax County Court doesn't have to follow a decision that another circuit, circuit court makes, um, it's still persuasive. It's a good predictor for how a judge in Fairfax County uh, would potentially be likely to, to look at these issues. So based on all that, can he get an injunction? Well, possibly. I mean, it, it looks like the avenue is available to him. Of course, he has to show that it's required, it's justified. Um, you know, she, she will certainly argue that the statements that she made on these interviews aren't, uh, aren't you know, close enough to be, to be justifiable. So I'm sure they would have to argue about that. I, I don't think that's a real close call myself. I mean, she basically said she will stand by her testimony for the rest of her life. That seems really equivalent to that statement that Tasha Kay had made in, in, in uh, the Cardi B situation. Um, where she basically said, you know, yes, it's gonna it's gonna require a court order for me to take these down. So Amber is kind of upping the ante in that regard. She is um, acting with impunity, and that is generally a situation where uh, a court would consider would consider granting an injunction. But the more difficult question is, should Johnny do that? Now. This is just one of the challenges that we have with the, the civil legal system. And what I mean when I'm talking about the civil legal system here is really this is private justice. This is not public justice. This is not the government coming in and, and bringing somebody into court, um, the state prosecuting them and, and threatening them with incarceration. That's public justice. And whether or not... <laughs> Well, let's just say regardless of what other opinions we might have uh, about the public systems of justice, the bottom line is they are certainly not stepping up to give Johnny Depp any assistance here. Um, I think there is room for criticism of that. I think we maybe would have to question if the genders were reversed in this situation and uh, Amber Heard was a man outgoing and reiterating his uh, accusations uh, against a woman that he had basically just been found to have abused that that might be taken a little bit more seriously by the institutions that we trust to take care of those types of things for us. But that's clearly not happening uh, with, with Johnny Depp. And what's worse is that we have these mainstream media organizations that are enabling Amber Heard, that are perfectly happy to take all the views that they're gonna get, all those hate clicks, and they're just gonna ride that until ultimately people stop paying attention. But the problem with private justice is really exactly what we're seeing, even even under the best circumstances, it really isn't that satisfying. He gets a $10.35 million judgment, but it doesn't give him his reputation back. He acknowledged his life has changed forever by this. There's always going to be people out there who when they hear Johnny Depp, they're going to think of these accusations and they're gonna think that, that he did all of these things. So you, you, can't, you can't pay pay that pain away. I mean, that's, that's something that, um, Money is simply not adequate to remedy that. 
So even under the best of circumstances, it's a pretty imperfect uh, system of justice. But then as you see here, it, it, it doesn't necessarily have a lot of teeth. If she doesn't fear the judgment, if she doesn't fear enforcement, then there's no disincentive for her to keep just doing essentially what, whatever she wants to do. It's been a very telling indictment, I think, of, uh, of so many systems of justice that she's just been able to get, to get away with so much stuff for so long. So I think we can safely assume that if anybody is going to pursue this and try to get her to stop, that's going to have to be Johnny. And the question then really becomes, is that really in his best interest? So I'm going to tell you, he's been living with this case for six years, okay? A lot of us who followed the case, the whole trial, you know, six weeks every day, we're up at like five o'clock over here on the East Coast, or over here on the West Coast. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot. It's a, it's a, it's a big, big undertaking to go through a trial like that. It's, it's extremely stressful. It can, it, can, it takes a lot out of you. And so at a certain point, Johnny just needs to be done. It's not healthy to continue over and over and over just getting engaged in, in, in these battles. And what I think is a, a fairly fundamental point to make here is that that's exactly what she's trying to do. This is what narcissists do. <laughs> they do whatever they need to do to get attention. Dr. Curry is feeling so vindicated with her <laughs> diagnosis right now when she told us Amber Heard simply must have attention at all costs. She doesn't care if it's good. She doesn't care if it's bad. And so... Now she is simply taking her heel turn. Everybody loves a heel. Everybody loves to hate somebody and wants, wants to see them get their comeuppance. So it's not that unpredictable that she's going to get a lot of attention out of this. And that's exactly what she wants. And it's by engaging in this outrageous and entitled behavior that she controls other people. She provokes them to get this reaction out of them. And that's really what she is trying to do with Johnny. It's the same thing that we saw on all of these audio recordings, this provoking, this needling, this, this requiring that he feel something because of her. And so there's a reason why uh, a lot of therapists will recommend that if you're dealing with a narcissist and you're extricating yourself from that situation, uh, you need to just disappear them. You need to, you know, gray rock, be uninteresting, give them nothing at all, be implacable, be immobile, and do not allow yourself to react because as soon as they draw you in, they have gotten the engagement that, that they're looking for. And that's going to continue to fuel them. It's going to continue to motivate them to up the ante and just continue their, their pattern of manipulation. For Johnny, I really got to say the best thing for him is not to get sucked into this cycle of perpetual litigation, of suing her every time she opens her mouth, of, of dragging her into arbitration under, under the NDA, filing for the, the injunction, enforcing the injunction, enforcing the judgment. At some point, he needs to just be done with her so that he can move on and not have to deal with it anymore. Now, I will say, personally, what I wouldn't mind seeing is if he just went ahead and unleashed Adam Waldman at her. I don't think Adam would mind, frankly. I, I think Adam might even enjoy it. You know, he, he didn't get to participate in the trial. That to me is is one of the heartbreaking pieces of this case that the man did who, who did so much to, to build it he did he didn't get to he didn't get to have the fun being able to, to tear that hoax apart 
but he could potentially trust trust Adam to assert his rights um, as he thought was was going to be appropriate and necessary. Um, I do think that that he should follow through with collecting the judgment. Um, that is not going to be a type of process that has nearly as much risk of sucking him in personally. You can just hand that off to the lawyers, hand that off to the collection agency, and they will take care of that for you. Uh, but when it does come to things like new injunction, got to enforce it, got to file a new lawsuit, I mean, that's going to open up all the doors to new discovery, new litigation, the whole process starts all over again. That's not good for Johnny. He needs to move on. So I think the bottom line to recognize here is that at this point, Amber's public statements are really hurting nobody but herself. She doesn't have the power to damage Johnny anymore because the world has seen through her, the jury has seen through her, and really the more she tries to justify herself, just the worse and worse she looks. So... This is a self-destructive path that she's on and the best way really to let it play itself out is just to run its course and karma will get to all of us in the end. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, please let me know in the comments what you think. Um, do you think Johnny should try to get an injunction? Do you think he should sue her for a new a new act of defamation uh, or do you think it's probably in his interest to take the win that he got and go ahead and call it a day thanks and i'll see you in the next one